And we are live. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Fleming Film Show with me, Robbie Fleming. And joining me, as always, is a lovely guy from LA, Mr. Justin Doyle. Hello, Justin. Lovely LA. Hello, Rob. What's going on, buddy? Well, uh, well I've uh, my first time takes on TikTok are back. Whoop, whoop. Did you whoop. do bullet train today? Yes, I'll be talking about that at the end of the episode. All right. Yeah, no spoilers, please. No spoilers, no spoilers. Let me tell you, you're, you're the guy who likes action and comedy, so I really want to hear what you have to say about it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm excited. <laughs> yes. Uh, did you want, do you want to explain what, what we're talking about today? All right, yeah. So with perfect timing, with a Bullet Train coming out, plus we've had, you know, Maverick come out recently, and, uh, you know, it just sort of feels like summer is back, summer blockbusters are back. We're still going through some pandemic and some monkey paw stuff, but uh, we uh, love summer movies, and summer just makes you feel good. You're out of school, you know, uh, you go on vacation. So what we are doing today is our top five favorite summer movies yes yes we'll have to do vacation or holiday movies another day yeah doesn't yeah, it does mine not necessarily like vacation yeah. or holiday movies yep well yeah i guess well, we'll get to it but uh yeah they're not it's not a i want to consider this vacation movies these are definitely summer movies so yes uh yeah do you want me to start it off yeah, sure. Why not? It saves me flipping the coin. Okay. What? Um, do you know how long we've been doing this? About nearly two years now. Two years. Wow. So that means that uh, not only does my number five coincide uh, with this topic, but I know what you did last summer because we were together doing this. And that is my number five movie, 1997's. I know what you did last summer. This is a great little horror film, campy horror film that I, this is, I was a young, young end during this time, you know, still, still uh, teens. So uh, this is right up my alley. This is something that really scared me as a kid. It is rated R. So, you know, PG 13, uh, I do recommend uh, that you wait until you're, a little bit older because um yeah it was racy and, and nudity and uh uh lots of blood and gore but uh, uh there was nobody hotter in my opinion at this time when i was a kid in 1997 than jennifer love hewitt so i saw everything that she was in but we also have sarah michelle geller in this movie freddie prince jr ryan Phillippe. i mean these those four names right there are like they were the well, hottest sarah michelle people. geller is one of my crushes if you know a certain tv show she's in yeah, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, uh, but also um, Ryan Phillippe was, you know, a hot uh, topic. So was Ryan, uh, Freddie Prince Jr. So the, just those four people alone, just star-studded. And two of them uh, are a married couple, as far as I'm aware. Uh, if Ryan Phillippe was married. Oh, no, Sarah and Freddie. Oh, uh, Freddie Prince Jr. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Freddie and Sarah. I think there's there's still a couple. Is that what you said. I'm, I'm hoping yeah, that's so. crazy. I love that... the little romance, so that's why they have perfect chemistry in the Scooby Doo movies. <laughs> yeah, uh, but yeah, so the movie is is four young friends uh, bound by a tragic accident are reunited when they find themselves being stalked by a hook wielding maniac in their small seaside town. So uh, the summer happened. They uh, were having fun drinking, and they hit somebody. Uh, they thought they killed him. They threw him in the in, in the water, and then the next summer they're starting to get stalked by this uh, hook wielding guy, and getting notes like I know what you did last summer, which is the title of this movie. Um, yeah, this this came after Scream, and Scream's my all time favorite horror movie ever. And this one's really really close because it is scary. It is got really good jump scares. Um, uh, and it, it can actually happen. Like the, I'm not big into like poltergeist and, and uh, uh, movies that are, you know, like the omen and stuff. Like I'm not scared by that stuff, but, but actual people dressing up and things going on murder sprees is so, so scary. You know, strangers could scare and stuff you like because that. Because so that's, that's about a lunatic who kills people dressed up as somebody else. Yeah. I know that movie is considered a horror, but uh, I, I just find it a, a good thriller. You know, I, I don't, again, I'm just that, um, people who are 
yeah, like prison and stuff. Like, I don't know. It is scary. Does, it is does scary. Para, does Parasite scare you? Because anybody can just run out and not run out of you with a knife on your birthday. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's not scary, though. But uh, that is a scary part of the movie. But no, the fact that he stalks them, gives them notes. Uh, you You have close encounters with them where you almost die, you know. Uh, there is a second one, so uh, I don't know what you did last summer. Is did follow this movie, so obviously some of them do make it. But it's a fantastic, uh, campy, fun horror film. And my number five is I know what you did last summer. Plus, it has the word summer in the title. Yes, so. yes. Uh, sadly, none of mine do. But my number five is technically set in May on the last day of school, and it's Richard Linklater's Dazed and Confused. Nice. Well, the beginning of summer starts, so this is that's perfect. I mean, this as soon as that bell rings, you're out of school. Yes. Summer's going. Yes, as I've been saying, I need to rewatch this movie, but I like how you have all these like characters and how they start uh, school. This was introduction to a lot of actors, like Ben Affleck is in this movie. Uh, let's have a look at the cast list of this. Do you want while I do that? Do you want to do oh. the, budget, the budget and the ratings for? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just remember that, but I wanted to make sure I didn't cut you off. Yeah, I know what you did last summer. It's a five point eight on IMDb. Uh, which the box office, uh, the budget was seventeen million. Worldwide gross is one hundred twenty five point five million dollars, which is great. Not good on Rotten Tomatoes, however. 43% uh, Rotten and then 40% for the audience score. So not the best. But yeah, um, dazing and views. I mean, Matthew McConaughey. Yeah, Jason London, Jerry Lauren Adams, Michela Djokovic, Sean Adams, Ori Contran, Adam Goldberg, Anthony Rapp, Sasha Jensen, Marissa Rabisi, Cole Hauser, Wiley Wiggins, Ben Affleck, Parker Posey, and yeah, Matthew McConaughey still the show in this movie. Yeah, Parker Posey's great too. Yeah, Matthew McConaughey, he's the older lad, and he says this line that I don't think you can get away with now. He says, so that's what I like about high school girls. They get, I get older, they say the same age. I don't think you'll be able to get away with that quote now. Yeah. Yeah, that is sort of like a canceling sort of thing right now. But uh, uh, it's funny. But, yeah, it's kind of disgusting. Uh, but, yeah, tell us about this movie. Yeah, so this is all about uh, the last day of school for these high schoolers. And they, in the antics they get up to on the last day of school and the start of summer, this takes place in one day. Like most of these other movies do on this list for me. But, yeah. What makes this movie stand out is the writing and the acting, and of course, Richard Linklater is directing. He is a great director because he knows what he can do with a massive cast. And I think because he's a good director, a lot of actors come back to work with him. Yes. Uh, yeah, I feel like there's that um, that baseball movie. Is everybody wants them? Is kind of like a follow up to this, or like a prequel to this. Because uh, it's Richard Linklater, Baseball Summer. Uh, yeah, this is a great film. Very uh, cult-driven. This is something that has gotten bigger as the years get older because, you know, everyone everyone loves it. And Matthew McConaughey is great, you know. Um, but, yeah, there's, there's drugs in this and alcohol and, and sex. And it's just sort of, a, you know, like – a misfit sort of fun day after after you know you get out of school for the summer i and if this happens just in this one day at this you know time right after the first day that you get out of school what the hell else are you gonna do for the rest of the summer i mean the rest of the summer is boring because you had the best day ever uh you know the day before your the whole uh the whole day started um is that the girl from, uh, uh, oh, God, 
the uh, Resident Evil movies? Is she in this? Mila Mi- 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 Jovovich, the girl yeah. from the Fifth Element, yeah. Yeah, Fifth Element, yeah. That's crazy. I saw her on the, the cover here, and I was like, dang. She hasn't. She doesn't look like she's aged at all. Her daughter's in Black Widow. She's a young uh, Natasha. Oh, wow. Nice. Uh, okay. Um, box office budget was six point nine million dollars. Worldwide gross is seven point nine million. However, huge rating seven point six on IMDb, ninety two percent on Rotten Tomatoes with a ninety percent audience score. So the critics love it. Just it I didn't do well. This in was one of his uh, best films of all time. I think latest. Yeah, this is a fantastic film lots of fun uh I mean, just you know I, but it, it is yeah like uh a lot of a lot of things would not be okay nowadays like i don't think you're allowed to paddle anybody anymore no you, well you shouldn't paddle anybody anyway that's abuse and that's wrong you ever get what about paddled as a kid Did your parents ever give you a good paddle oh, well time was different in the 90s okay yeah well this is this is 90s this is uh this is yeah 93 here so yeah you you were born right or next year 94 94 the same the same the same year as your girlfriend was born 93 no 94 94 yeah i don't know if it's 94 (laughs) i'm glad she's not gonna watch this um i keep wanting her to get younger too you know just keep getting younger and you stay the same age (laughs) Well, yeah, and I just say it's 27. I am 27. Uh, I can't stay 27 I, forever. I'm always 27. <laughs> um, all right. Here we go with my number four. Uh, yeah, worth of you movies. We love love here. And this is one of the greatest love stories ever told, ever written. Um, this movie takes place entirely in the summer because it's all about summer love. And uh, to me, the most two people I've ever wanted to root for in a movie are in this movie starring uh, Rachel McAdams and Ryan Gosling. This is 2004, The Notebook. It's just a sweet film. I mean, when you, I, you just want to do this, you know, you're a single guy, right? So you, to have like a great summer with somebody who you kind of fall in love with and get to spend like, these times with you know like you rode the boat and uh you're going out on dates and there's the carnival you know and that's how you fall in love and meet it's just it's just the best and then you just have a really good time and just watching them because they they're young you know they you just you just kind of watch but the thing is is she's rich he's down on his you know pushing pennies here um but the fact is is that he's romantic he, you know, uh, he's charming, and even without money, he can still uh, block off. Um, who's the guy? He's um, in the Sonic movies. Uh, James Marsden. Yeah, James Marsden. If you can uh, put, uh, you know, take Rachel McAdams away from James Marsden, then uh, you know it's good, good love. Um, but what's good about this movie as well is that it takes place over time, you know? We only get to see them in sort of the times that they see each other. And it just so happens a lot of the times it's during the summer. Uh, Because she does go after James Marsden, but he builds the dream house that she always wanted. So he still has this passion for her, even though she's long gone. And yeah, they have a good weekend together. And this is intertwined and interwoven with these two old people who are having conversation uh trying this old man's trying to help this lady remember you know who she was and uh it's based off of a book also starring james garner and sam shepherd and joan allen and gina Rowland. it's it's just a beautiful film and it's you know yeah, taken away from days right exactly taken away from like days and confused with the silly and i know what you did last summer which is a horror throwing a love movie in for the summer is is it's just as special because uh, this was a special movie. And uh, yeah, I mean, I fell in love with Rachel McAdams and I think the world fell in love with Ryan Gosling. So it's, uh, it, it was, it was a good one. 
I've seen a lot of Rachel <laughs> McAdams movies. Yeah, this was a big one. Do you like this movie? Yes, I do. I do. I think it's one of the best ones with uh, Rachel McAdams and Ryan Gosling in. Yeah. It's kind of well, where we first when saw I was with my, uh When I was with my ex-girlfriend, I watched a lot of love films. Yeah, they, they the girls love them for sure. And then, um, I mean, if, once you get a good one, you know, it sticks with you. And this one stuck with me for sure. Uh, yeah. Box office budget was twenty nine million. Worldwide gross is one hundred and eighteen point two. So it really did well. Um, yeah, it was a James Patterson book, I believe. Seven point eight on Rotten Tomatoes, and I mean uh, seven point eight on IMDb. Check this one out. Fifty three percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Crazy. Eighty five percent for audience score, though. So that says. Why, why didn't the critics like it? Yeah, I have no idea. Like Great there's acting no, by there's both. no mathematical formula for critics. They can just go off their own opinions, can't they? <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. 179 reviews, um, but audience is 250,000 uh, plus ratings. So obviously more critics need to go revisit this one. Definitely, definitely. Uh, Great. Let's hear your number four. My number four is actually a tie between these two films. And the reason why they are a tie is because they're both amazing coming-of-age action-adventure films about these group of kids who go off on adventures. They are they are 1985's The Goonies, which I re-watched for an upcoming review, and 1986's Stand By Me. They are both similar films in a way because they're about a group of kids going on adventures and they learn something about themselves. They normally, they do it for this goal over the summer. And by the end, they kind of build as characters. These are great uh, character building movies. And I don't know what happens to the kids in the Goonies at the end, but you find out what happens to the kids in Stand By Me. And you get to hear about what happened to them afterwards. And obviously because... Will Wheaton, the boy Will Wheaton plays is, as an adult, he's narrating this, and it's Richard Dreyfus doing the voice, and at the end of the film, you see Richard Dreyfus uh, writing it all out as a book, which is a good framing device. But yeah, these two movies are absolute classics. I reckon you have probably seen them, and I just think they're both equally great movies. Have you seen these movies, Justin? Uh, turn your mic back on. Yes, I have seen these movies. These are great picks. Yeah, just tons of fun. You know, sort of Stranger Things-esque where they're just going off uh, being rebellious and, and having fun. Uh, Steven Spielberg co-wrote uh, The Goonies and presented that, so that's always uh, something I like. Uh, Richard Donner is the director, which is... Um, Amazing director. Yeah, he is, but it's this is an interesting movie for him, right? Well, for him it's not direct. the omen or lethal weapon. <laughs> yeah. Um, exactly. Uh, and it's a little bit fantastical, right? Yeah. Um, which is right up uh, Mr. Spielberg's alley. Yeah, and Stand By Me is just classic. I mean, it's, it's crazy. It's tragic. Um, you get uh, a, a big chubby Jerry O'Connell who's now like in the best shape and has a beautiful wife. Yeah, uh, we did. We did lose uh, River River Phoenix. Um, but, he was uh, the best out before Labs, in my mm -hmm. opinion. Mm -hmm. But there is a link to both these movies, and it's Corey Feldman. Yep, Corey Feldman. Uh, I like uh, Kiefer always. He's always good. Oh, Kiefer's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Um and yeah, Corey Feldman, he's 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 got like eleven or twelve movies. But they're he's, all he's like, a reality star now. He's all, they're all really good. Is he what's the reality show? Yeah, well when well a couple of years back he was always on like British talk shows and stuff. I believe it. I know he was on uh like a celebrity housing one. 
Yeah, something like that. I think because of his <laughs> abuse in the industry, he hides to stay away from it now. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. All right. So for the Goonies, 7.7 7 on IMDb. Pretty good. Uh, very good, actually. Um, budget was 19 million. Worldwide gross is 64.5. Uh, Rotten Tomato score for the Goonies is 76. Uh, audience score 91. Pretty good. Stand by me a little bit higher. 8.1. This is only an hour and a half movie directed by Rob Reiner, by the way. Amazing director. <clears throat> budget was eight million dollars. Worldwide gross is 52.2 million. That's great. You still there, Justin? Your mic's off again. Uh, 91% for Stand By Me, 94% audience score. About to say Stand By Me is, is widely considered one of the greatest movies of all time. Um, let's see what it says here. Uh, IMDb ranks it. 215. Nominated for one Oscar. Do you know what it was? I think it was adapted screenplay. Sure was. Best writing. All right. Fantastic. Okay. Ready to move on because mine's getting silly. Yes, let's hear your silly number three. <clears throat> this might have been, I think I put this on the list before. I'm not sure which, but. Uh, this is a great comedy movie. Um, it takes place uh, during the summer. Uh, what's great about this movie is uh, these two legendary comedic actors are at the top of their game um, and they both steal this movie. This movie came out in 1988, starring John Candy and Dan Aykroyd and it's The Great Outdoors. Mm. Uh, Annette Benning's also in this, but yeah, it's two families. They go out and they s stay in this cabin together and they just have a good, good old fun time on the lake, um, you know, dancing out in, in, uh, in the bars there. Uh, at one point, John Candy tries to put away this huge steak. And if he does, he gets like his name on the wall or a t-shirt or something. I mean, it's I'm just ridiculous. John Candy. Oh my God. One of the best to ever do it. Uh, I love stories uh, that people talk say about him, just like how he was in his personal life. It's just great. Um, and Ed Benning's also in this. Uh, but yeah, it's there's also, you know, bears and raccoons that are get crazy in this movie. Um, yeah, and they just they just go camping, and it's his obnoxious brother-in-law. Uh, this is a Howard Deutsch film uh, written by John Hughes. So we know John Hughes. But yeah, Pretty in Pink, uh, he also directed, and some kind of wonderful so he moved away from those sort of teen movies and went into this sort of i mean i've i've seen this a bunch because my dad had it on all the time and watched all the time loved it and i love it too and it's just the first thing i thought of when it came to summer movies was this movie because this is what people do they go to a cabin they play on lakes they you know they take their kids because their kids are out of school uh you have you know kids falling in love for summer love it's just this it's just a sweet little film so my number three is The Great Outdoors. You haven't seen this one, Rob? No, I haven't. But I would yeah. like to watch more John Candy movies. I watched Planes, Trains, and Automobiles last year. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's some kind of wonderful. Uh, uh, budget was $24 million. Worldwide gross is $43.4 million. 6.6 .6 on IMDb with... 41% uh, rotten and 70% for the audience score. So just like me, we're loving it. You ready for my number three? Or do you want to go through the uh, box office first? I already, did, I already hit that one first. Sweet, sweet. Uh, my number three is a movie. Uh, it's one of Cody House's favorite movies, actually. I know how much he loves this movie, and it and it was, uh, it was his favorite movie of the road trip episode, the first episode he was on with us, and it's Cameron Crowe's Almost Famous. Yeah, I think it's one of his all times. 
yes, it's based on Cameron Crowe's experience as a reporter for uh, Rolling Stone. And for the summer, this character got to tour the band for the whole summer. And this has a cast of legendary actors. Kate Hudson, Francis McDormand, Philip Seymour Hoffman, Billy Cudup, Jason Lee, Lara Taylor, Anna Paquin, Zoe Deschanel. I could go on forever about who's in this movie. The soundtrack is amazing and the story is just perfection and it is shot beautifully by Mr. John Tull. I think Cody was did a good recommendation for me with this movie. And well, thank you, Cody, if you're watching. But, and I do want to do a full review of this on my website one day. But yeah, almost famous had to make the list. And yeah, and that's why it's my number three. Uh, yeah, this is fantastic movie. Great soundtrack. Also, Feruza Box in this. Um, that's her name. Yeah, uh, Noah Taylor, I think you said. Jimmy Fallon, Bijou Phillips. Uh, Cameron Crowe is. I can't remember the name of the young guy. Uh, the main, what, what's the main actor called? Oh, yeah. Um, his name is Patrick Fugit. That's his name. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I love being taken back. This is like a period piece movie, yeah. you know, because it came out. Thousand. I love being taken back. I think um, I think he just got it right. You know, I mean, obviously it's his life, and so of course, why wouldn't he get it right? But I just think he did, and um, it's it is also a great road trip movie. Yes, but uh, yeah, it's just it's just. I mean, if you love music, you're gonna love this movie. If you love uh, even like uh, sort of um, the the behind the scenes of it all, you're definitely gonna love it because this is just a tour bus going around from gig to gig. And uh, yeah, it's a great time. And, and of course, Kate Hudson to me steals the movie. She's uh, Penny Lane, and she. Um, this is sort of where she really was kicking off as a as an actress. Hope she comes back around. Well, after making music, I think yeah. Uh, nominated for four Oscars: uh, best writing, best actress supporting, best actress supporting with Francis as well. And Kate, and then best editing, and one for best writing. And Frances McDormand kind of steals a show in this movie, even though she's not on the trip with them. Yeah, she's not in it much, but she's great every time. Yeah, you see her. But that's the thing is she's that's why she's so legendary, and that's why she's been nominated so many times and have won so many times. Yeah, uh, it was seven point nine on IMDb. Sixty million dollars for the budget. Worldwide gross though is forty seven point three, so didn't do too well. I think it's another one of those sort of cult uh, crept at the end movies. Eighty nine percent on Rotten Tomatoes. It's won the Oscar for best screenplay, then it is a good movie. Without sure. the screenplay, you have no movie. Boom boom. Uh, eighty nine percent on Rotten Tomatoes and ninety two for audience score. So all of yours so far have been really good. Yes, and, two, um, two, and my top two are two of my all-time favorites. So, yeah. All right. Uh, let's see. There it is. All right. Here we go. My number two is a fantastic summer movie. Um, definitely, when uh, summer happens, one of the things that people think of is, uh, you know, the great old American pastime, and that is baseball. Yeah. And to me, um, you know, I could have picked a lot of movies, but this is, uh, this is one that I just truly, it was a tie between this and Bull Durham because they're my favorite baseball movies. You know, Sandlot's fantastic, uh, so so many others, but I had to pick this movie because of the entire cast and how great they are. Rob still needs to see this movie. It came out in 1992, and it's a league of their own. Yes. This is uh, starring Tom Hanks, Gina Davis, Madonna, Rosie O'Donnell, Lori Petty. Um, I mean, there is so many. Ann Cusack, Ann Ramsey. Um, 
Directed by Penny Marshall, and this is a movie about uh, two sisters who joined the first female professional baseball league and struggled to help it succeed amid their growing, their own growing rivalry. Yeah, so Tom Hanks uh, is the coach for this women's team, uh, and they're a bunch of misfits. And you know, of course, this is the first time that we're seeing women play uh, baseball, so. Um, you know, there's a lot to deal with. There's, uh, babies and, uh, pregnancy and marriages. Um, and it just is all affecting, uh, the way that they play and how they is, are, but is Gina still beautiful in it? Is what? Is Gina still beautiful in it? Uh, yeah, Gina's, I mean, they're all, this is, you know, 92, three or whatever. They're all beautiful. There's, um, they're all yeah they're all just great and they're all really good actors they all just meshed really really well uh this is one of the movies where tom hanks takes a pee for like a minute long and they just keep it in the movie uh which is interesting and weird but um uh, it's just a fun movie and yeah it takes place during the summer uh, you know, the girls, they go out and meet guys, and uh, he, Tom Hanks, of course, doesn't like that. He wants them to be focused, and, you know, because all of this depends on another season and and, and uh, uh, sponsors and stuff. So uh, they are the Peaches. They're the greatest baseball team ever, full of misfits, uh, kind of like, yeah, Major League and uh, Sandlot. Um, but I just love this movie so much, and it – to me, it just feels more summer than like, um, than like major league because it's they're traveling, they're on the road, they're uh, at small venues and parks and not big like arenas and stadiums. So uh, I just felt like it was a little more summer themed. So my number two is a league of their own. Yes, yes. Well, I want to do a Penny Marshall rank list one day because she's one of the greatest American female directors of all time i think she's fantastic yeah and this is this shows in this movie uh 40 million dollar budget 132.4 million dollar uh, worldwide gross 7.3 on rotten Tom i mean on imdb uh league of their own on uh, rotten tomatoes 81 percent rotten 84 percent audience so there we have it a league of their own yes they're, they're doing a spin-off series on it um i mean it's it's a popular popular movie and tom hanks is so freaking funny in it yes i can picture if penny marshall got a great performance out of him with big and he's good in this movie too well plus he's the most legendary Oh, and he was in a movie All I right, really enjoyed. It. And he was in a movie I really enjoyed this year with Elvis. Yeah. Yeah, he's he's the best. He is the best, although he wasn't the best in that movie, Austin Butler was. Yeah. Yes. But my number two is another coming of age film i absolutely love 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 this is about a scout camp and it's wes anderson's mean rise kingdom and it's about love <coughs> bless you yeah knew this was coming yes yeah so i have spoken about this so many times since i've been doing this film stuff and me and Ryan Kingham has always stuck to me as my favorite Wes Anderson movie. And I just love the cast, the characters, the uh, the setting, the production design, the directing. And the screenplay is really solid. I really get annoyed when people say this is at least a Wes Anderson movie because I'm like, watch it again. And then, like, and then try and like it the more you watch it. Now, I can forgive people for not liking French Dispatch or any other Wes Anderson movie I like, but with Moonrise Kingdom, I'm very, I'm very kind of protective over it. I just think it's just a movie people need to see more. Yeah, you're like, how could you not like it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's good. I I enjoy a uh, little Moonrise Kingdom. Uh, yeah. 
Uh, it is has been on a lot of your lists. I try to keep movies that I put on my list. Uh, you know, I try to keep them separate as much as possible. But yeah, um, I saw this on a lot of uh, other people's lists, and um, it, yeah, I just knew it. It was coming on yours because I know it's one of your all time faves. Yes. But yeah, big cast: Jason Schwartzman, Lucas Hedges, uh, Jared Gilman. Kara Hayward, who played the kids, Bill Murray, Bruce Willis, Edward Norton, Francis McDormand, still. still this Swinton. was probably Bruce Willis's last great movie as well. Oh, interesting. Okay. Uh, yeah. This is about um, off the coast of New England. A young boy and a girl fall in love. They are moved, they are moved to run away together. Various factions of the town mobilize to search for them, and the town is turned upside down, which not which might not be a bad thing. But uh, yeah, so they fall in love, they run away, and then the town searches for them. Yes. Yes, and you know and it's a lot of fun. production design. You know, this you know, has two of my uh, favorite actresses in who was in the one that was in the last movie I talked till- about. Francis. And Tilda, yeah. Francis and Tilda, yeah. Um, they call the camp Camp Nowhere. That's the name of a movie. Is it Nowhere? I think so. It's just funny yeah. how Edward Norton always smokes in his movies. It's yeah. like this one. In every single scene he's in, he always has a cigarette on the go. Yeah, that's, that's kind of like... Uh, I think Bill did that in... Uh, in Rushmore, yeah, I think you, I think you did it. I remember. Well, Wes just kind of keeps true and real. I mean, people smoke cigarettes. You don't have to keep cigarettes out of movies just because people don't like them anymore. But it's just honesty, right? Yeah, um, Belfast. Yeah, that is my only flaw with Belfast. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was a great film. Seven point eight on uh, IMDb. Uh, 16 million was the budget's worldwide gross was 68.2. Um, 93% of Rotten Tomatoes, 86% for audience. So it, it did pretty well. All right, here we go. My What's number your one favorite summer movie, my favorite summer movie, you know, uh, just like with The Great Outdoors. Um, I just sit and watch whatever my parents had on because that's all there was. You got one TV, there was no tablets, there's no internet. It's a book, it's outside. You watch a movie with whatever your parents are watching. That's that's how it was. Um, unless they were trying to make, you know, just make you do nothing and just be yourself, you know, uh, so they can do whatever they throw a cartoon movie on. So I would see a lot of movies that uh, aren't for kids, but also, um, uh, you know, maybe at my age now, if I hadn't seen this so much as a kid, would I love it as much as I do today? And I would say yes, because uh, not only does this movie has one of the greatest soundtracks of all time and summer love stories of all time, but uh, nobody puts baby in the corner. And that's why my movie for my number one summer movie is 1987's Dirty Dancing. Amazing choice, yeah, uh, I mean, it's so so good. I'm I'm just obsessed. This is like one of the movies that I'm uh, I'm just obsessed with. Um, I love the dancing in this movie. Uh, plus, it has a lot of real true things that are going on, like abortions and uh, yeah, other pregnancies. Um, uh, you, uh, you know, kids, uh, uh, guys fighting over girls. Um, but yeah, this all takes a, oh, it's at a summer, it's in the Catskills, it's like a resort, uh, and um, Baby falls in love with the camp's dance instructor, Johnny Castle, and Johnny dances with all the older ladies, because this is mainly like older white people's, you know, Catskills, again, it's like, this is their sort of um, retreat that they go to every year. They have cabins there and whatnot, but yeah, the the older ladies love to dance with uh, Johnny Castle because he's you know young, hot, and has the moves, and um, it it gives them more to pay attention to there. And it's like a whole thing, like it's part of the thing. It's like you must you know uh, dance with them and make them feel you know, like they're wanted here. 
But then the the younger folk, they go to this other place, and this is where they do the dirty dancing. And baby and, sort and of another like, great film to watch of a lady. Oh, please. Of course, yeah. This is like one of those Netflix and chill sort of movies, you know? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Fat and Grease. Oh, yeah, right? But yeah, so, uh, uh, yeah, she starts falling for him. They, you know, it's, do they belong together? She's with this, uh, you know, she lives, she's with this wealthy family, and he's sort of kind of what they call a peasant during this time. Um, but, uh, yeah, Patrick Swayze, Jennifer Grey, uh, Jerry Orbach, who's legendary. Um, yes, he is. Kel he's Kelly the Bishop. Can be in the beast. All right. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it just reeks of summer. They do lots of different uh, activities. Um, in the water, they, you know, he lifts her out of the water. They're dancing on the log. Uh, it's just a sexy, great summer romance movie and uh of course when you think of summer you got to think of, of dirty dancing yeah um, yeah it takes place in the 60s so it's got uh it's got some um uh old school there but yeah it came out in 1987 still rocking my world to this day i have seen it maybe twice already this year <laughs> it's just so good but was, was, that, was that with your girlfriend? Sometimes. Sometimes it's just me. Uh, um, like if I've had some, some drinks and uh, I don't want to put on a new movie because I don't think I'll remember it, I put on, I'll just like pop this on. Um, but yeah, budget was $6 million, worldwide gross, $214.5 million. That's a huge jump. Um, this movie did spawn a TV show, a, a second one, Dirty Dancing, or Dirty Dancing Havana Nights with uh, Diego Luna and Celia Ward, War, Cela Ward, but, uh, uh, Patrick Swayze was in that one too. Uh, Rotten Tomatoes, 69%, 90% for the audience though. So that should tell you that. And yeah, seven point oh on IMDb. Good choice, good choice. I'm very disappointed you've not seen my number one because I don't think it's one of the greatest films of all time. I think it's one of the most important films of all time as well. What? You ready? You ready to hear uh, it? I, I already know what it is, so the, I, the audience needs to be ready. So my number one is a movie from 1989 it is written produced directing and starring one of the greatest directors of all time mr spike lee this also has another great ensemble cast we have danny aiello ozzy davis ruby g richard edson giancarlo espedito bill nunn rosie perez john turturro martin lawrence and a young Samuel L. Jackson. This is a story set on the hottest day in summer. This is about the racial tensions between between African Americans and Italian Americans. This is all over a pizza place, not having African Americans on the Hall of Fame. And this is do the right thing. Boom, boom. So, if you remember, two years ago there was a lot of tension. And there were all this Black Lives Matter thing. Do you remember that, uh -huh. Mr? Do I remember? Yes, of course I remember. Yes. So this movie predicted that because the last 20 minutes of this movie are exactly what happened in America that two years ago. And it, it's starting to think if more people watch this movie and watch this movie before that happened, people would have been more aware of the situation. Because let me tell you, all, all this this movie just kicks off right after the last 20 minutes. And boy, let me tell you, this is an intense 20 minutes and it is just perfection. The whole movie is just great because of the cinematography and the colours. The screenplay is just one of the most solid things ever written. And Spike Lee just knows how to make a good movie and be this character and be this audience to the character as he witnessed what happens in this neighborhood on this day 
and what builds up to this horrible event that happens. I'm not ruining it for you or the audience, but if you love summer movies and you want to see something different and feels a lot more real, do the right thing is what you want to see. It's one of the greatest movies of all time, and I don't know why it wasn't nominated for Best Picture, because, I mean, I think this is a much better movie than Driving Miss Daisy. This should have won Best Picture in 1989. Nominated for Best Actor for Danny Aiello and Best Writing. Yes, it should have been nominated for Best Director and Best Picture as well. Driving Miss Daisy is a good-ass movie. It is a good ass movie, but do the right thing is has more rewatchability, as you would say. Ooh, I know. I I need I need I need I need to check this out. So uh, it'll by the time that you and I talk next week, I will have seen this movie. Yes, yes, and I want to see a worth the view movies review on it. A hundred percent, you got it. Uh, yeah. Um. I love you. Yeah, I just I can't talk about it because I haven't seen it. But uh, I love Spike Lee. He's one of my all times. Um, and uh, yeah, huge cast. You you named them all. Um, fantastic. Well, Giancarlo Espadito is one of the biggest actors on TV right now. He's been in three amazing TV series. Well, at least one of them. What's the other two? Breaking Bad, Mandalorian, and The Boys. Uh, I haven't seen Breaking Bad, and I've seen The Boys. Is he in the first two seasons? I think he's in all three of them. Okay. All right, I need a recap. Have you seen the new season? Uh, no, I need to catch up with The Boys. Yeah, I have the last episode of season two to watch, and then uh, the new season. Yeah. Uh, okay, uh, let's see. Do the right thing. 7.9 on IMDb. It's box office, which is 6.5 million and worldwide gross 37.2. Should be more. 92% on Rotten Tomatoes, 89% on audience rating. So pretty damn good. Yes. Uh, all right, let's count them down. My number five was I Know What You Did Last Summer. My number five was Dazed and Confused. Coming in at number four was The Notebook. My number four was A Tie Between the Goonies and Stand By Me. My number three is The Great Outdoors. My number three is Almost Famous. My number two is A League of Their Own. My number two is Moonrise Kingdom. My number one is Dirty Dancing. And my number one is Do the Right Thing. The one I thought would have been on your list is Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Um... So that's set in the summer, isn't it? But it, I mean, even if it is, it doesn't make me feel summer. It doesn't make me feel like a summer movie, you know. Um, I want to like all these other ones. I felt summer, you know. Uh, by the way, the director of Dirty, uh, Dirty Dancing won Best Song for at the time of my life at the Oscars. The director of Dirty Dancing is the same director is one of my other all-time favorite movies i didn't even know this the director is emil ardolino and he directed sister act yes wow <laughs> so maybe i am like a director guy i just didn't even know it yeah well the way i always look at it is if you like one film by a director you might as well try another film by that director three men and a little lady that's a good movie and then the Nutcracker, 1993. Let's see. I love this movie. This is like the the um, the Dan. It's Macaulay Culkin. Oh my God, this is intense. It's like a stage play, Broadway. Oh my God, that's amazing. I I love Emil Ardolino. Is he your new favorite director now? He might be. I don't know. I don't know. Um, all right. Recommendation. Let's hear it. What's yes, your fa yeah. What's your favorite movie you've seen this last week? Oh, it's been today actually. It's Bullet Train. Oh, oh shoot. Okay, tell me about it. We forgot to yeah, do so all the rants. This doesn't come out for uh, you until Friday. Yeah. Well, they I say think... Thursdays now. Thursday night is 
is when they come out. So, oh, fair enough. But yeah, you need to go and see this movie because you have Brad Pitt, Joey King, Brian Tyree Henry, Michael Shannon, Aaron Taylor Johnson, um, loads of other celebrities. I don't really want to talk about. So they're all massive surprises. But yeah, if you didn't see a trailer for this, I don't know what you're going to believe you're, you're seeing because you just have action and comedy blended in with this really fun story about this assassin trying to do this job in Japan on a bullet train and all these other assassins are after him. Sounds like my type of movie. Oh, it is your type of movie. It's already made my top five this year. It might not Whoa. stay in there much longer because I'm looking forward to the second half of this year a lot. Me too. Um, it's only 58 on Ron Tomatoes, so we'll wonder what's going on there. Oh, this 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 will be an audience here. I think it's better than Ambulance and the Grey Man and the Available Way of Massive Talent. Yeah. Once uh, the audience uh, sees it, I'm sure we'll be getting a lot more love for it. Yeah. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. I can't wait. I don't. I'm, I'm for sure gonna see it this weekend. I just don't know when yet. But uh, uh, yeah, that's what I'm looking looking forward to. And I'm also looking forward to the Ron Howard film he's bringing out for Amazon about the about the rescue mission in Thailand. Oh right, they they did the the documentary last year. Um, yeah, the rescue. Yes, with Vigo, Colin Farrell, and Joel Edgerton. And, well, yeah, the the documentary was called The Rescue. I don't know what the the new one's. Called. Thirteen lives, thirteen lives. This oh, one was called. Got it. Uh, great. Um, yeah, I'll talk briefly about my recommendation because uh, you guys don't have Hulu over there, right? Hulu. No. You know, either the Hulu films come on to either uh, Disney Plus or Amazon. Great. So it's actually on Disney Plus right now for you uh, over there, and it's on Hulu right now. This is a movie starring Zoe Deutsch, and it's called Not Okay. And uh, this is – Hulu's killing it um, <coughs> with – they're putting out movies every week. It's like a, it's like a Netflix uh, but yeah, this is about a girl who's really wants to just be famous uh, influencer wise. And she poses that she's in Paris, uh, you know, even though she's not, she's at home, uh, like just by like uh, doctoring up photos and whatnot. And then it turns out that there's a Paris attack and it was right where she was at like five minutes before. So now she's stuck in this lie and she doesn't know where to go. Uh, and it's pretty crazy. Uh, Dylan O'Brien's also in this movie. Um, they were both in uh, The Outfit earlier this year with Mark Rylance. Mia Isaac is also in this, who is so, so good. She's also in the movie that just came out called uh, Away We Go with uh, John Cho on Amazon Prime. Mm -hmm. um, so these three are just holding it down for this year so far. Um, but yeah, it's... It's not a um, tie up in a cute little bow sort of in a movie. This is, this is you know, she lied about something huge and things get crazy, you know. And uh, I think it's definitely worth the view. I'm doing a worth the view movies on it today. Um, it's it's an easy watch. It goes down smooth, but uh, yeah, it's about a tough subject and um, she, she. It's crazy what people will do and. and, and put themselves through and other people through just to um, get popular on, on Instagram and stuff like that. I, I don't know. It's, it's tough stuff. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, she's great. Zoe Deutsch is so, so good. Uh, I recommend her to anybody. Uh, let's do a couple of also rands for our summer movies. Cause I'm sure there's, I left some off because uh, I, you know, we can't have them all on. No, we can't. Um, I had In the Heights was one of them. I thought that you was. Don't need to see that movie. one. In the Heights, I'm not seeing that yet. Jaws, of course. Uh, did um, you have Call Me by Your Name on there? Dead what? Call Call Me by Your Name with Timothy Chalamet. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's on these lists and stuff. Um, I just don't. It wasn't, you know. 
it wasn't one that just stuck with there's me. another Makes timothy one. chalamet film i like called hot summer nights yeah i haven't seen that but that's one that uh, came up a lot uh, uh the way another, another horror film summer wise is midsummer yeah midsummer um, and obviously you have Grease, uh, Spider-Man Far yeah. From Home. I watched that yesterday. Far From Home, yeah. Um, I just watched uh, No Way Home. Um, I this one barely. I should have had it on there. I should have thrown it in there some uh, somewhere. But Summer of Soul is a fantastic meant, movie that takes that. place in the oh, summer. Oh, and Palm Springs. I love Palm Springs. Yeah, Palm Springs is great. Um, the Karate Kid. Little Miss Sunshine. Before S Little Miss Sunshine's a big one. The Talented um, Mr. Ripley, that's a thriller. Yeah. Dog Day Afternoon, that's a big one. Uh, Vicky um, Christina Barcelona, Luca. Yeah. Not an American graffiti. Been always mean Luca. to check that one out. American Graffiti is great. Yeah, it's similar to uh, Days and Confused without the sex. Uh, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Yeah. Even though that, that's during school. Um, Mystic Pizza. Real Women Have Curves is really, really good. Uh, yeah, there we go. Taking Woodstock. It's such a weird movie, but it's good. All right. Fantastic. Um, did you want to do remakes for next week or what was the other one rappers that, that are in movies yeah let's do yeah, let's do our top five favorite movies starring rappers i have a feeling that your number one is going to be the same as the number one for wrestlers so i know a famous rapper appears in that movie as well oh yeah yeah well, we'll see. Well, I, would, I, like to I make... would have said rock stars, but two rock stars appear in my favorite movie of all time, so I thought that was unfair. Let's see. Let's just see if uh, this would be a fruitful rappers and movies. Okay, they... Oh, well, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. And yeah, yeah, one yeah, of your yeah, favorite yeah. actors yeah, yeah. of all time has a rap career? Who vanilla ice? <laughs> uh, do you do you know who vanilla ice is? I don't know who vanilla ice is. Um, I've seen what has him sat. That's my boy. He's in that's my boy. Yeah. Oh, you mean uh, Mark Wahlberg? Okay. No, Will Smith. I know. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Although now you've opened me an option to put one some of the best films in there. I know this is great, actually. I'm. Uh, I, I mean, it's, it's. It'll be interesting. Yeah, I have some uh, stuff to talk about. Okay, cool. Yep. Cool, cool, cool. Yep, let's do it. Top five favorite film star and rappers. Beautiful. You can't have more than one Fast and Furious movie in there. I know. I know. I know. And um, uh, it's definitely going to be hard not to have the same number one. As wrestler, yeah. Well, so, I I have to. I can't do it again. I can't do it again. We'll have to mix it up. I've had I've had the Dark Knight as number one twice. Have you had? Uh, how many times do you think you've had Moonrise Kingdom on the list? Like four mm -hmm. or five, right? I can't remember. Well, we, I think we ranked Wes Anderson. I'm sure that was up there. Yeah, and yeah. Then... We'll probably have to re-rank them when Android City comes out. Here's another one, huh? Yep. He's right. making, but he's, he's got like three or four films in production at the moment. Great. Um, awesome. What a week this was. I hope everyone's having a good summer out there. Uh, yes. Let us know your favorite summer movies down in the in the notes there. Uh, if there's a topic you want us to talk about, tell us that. If there's a movie you want us to uh, talk about, tell us that. Uh, where can they find you, Rob? 
You can find me at Robbie's Reviews. Today I reviewed The Incredibles. Tomorrow I am reviewing uh, your, one of your favourite movies ever, Dances with Wolves. Uh, TikTok is officially back now. Check out my first time takes on TikTok on Bullet Train. And you can follow me on Twitter, Facebook or Instagram. Yes. And I'm at Worth the View Movies on all the things. Worth the View Movie on Twitter. Check out the TikTok. It has uh, other product, uh, other information on there that others don't. And uh, other conversation going on. So go check that out. And um, yeah, this was a fun week. And, and shout out to Trent Martin and Josh Hickey for giving us uh, the comments in the live chat. Boom, boom. Yeah, I can't see him here, but uh, yeah, thanks. Thanks, guys. And until next time. Until next time. Bye, guys. Bye, Justin. Bye, guys. Later, Rob. <laughs>